Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Manish Nakpal and I would be talking to you about surgery in cases of von Hippel Lindau angiomas. We all know that von Hippel Lindau patients develop angiomas in the periphery at any point of their life and we want we have to keep on uh, checking their peripheral uh, areas on fundus every time they come so that we can detect them in time and then treat them with lasers so that uh, they don't keep on increasing and they don't cause uh, traction and leakage and a lot of complications which come with it. This is a classic uh, picture where you see a few peripheral angiomas. And uh, typically they are detected and then treated with uh, laser. A uh, wide field angiography always helps in detecting new lesions and then you laser them so that they get uh, fibrosed and they stop leaking and don't cause further complications. This is again another patient which you see peripheral lesions which are well lasered. Uh, there was an exudation on the macula which is gradually clearing up. You can see the crenated appearance of the exudates. Now at times they increase and, and they cause traction apart from just a normal leak. And this is uh, one such case where you can see uh, angioma uh, superiorly as well as inferiorly. There's a traction uh, which is coming onto the arcade and you can see that we are first removing the vitreous, which is also uh, quite dense, uh, as you can see. These cases have a tendency to form a lot of membranes uh, uh, at times. So first we do a vitrectomy, and then you can see this inferior traction, which has been uh, caused on the angioma, angioma, and that's leading to the traction over the arcades in this particular area. So. We uh, try to diathermize some of these the vessels, feeder vessels, which are there before we take care of the angioma. So, so otherwise, there's a lot of bleeding in these cases. So this is typically how I treat them. Uh, we, we fibrose them, we diathermize them, both the angiomas, and then uh, prepare for a retinectomy in this inferior part so that the traction is relieved and there's no bleeding. And uh, once uh, the diathermy is done, uh, we remove the angioma in toto so that uh, it stops bleeding. You can see that how it's being removed, as well as the inferior one where the diathermy is done so that we can uh, relieve the traction. We are cutting the area and segregating it from the area of the traction so that the retina gets uh, relieved and then do a good laser around them uh, and then um, uh, settle the retina with endodrainage uh, uh, at the end of surgery. This is the post-operative picture of uh, this patient a few days after surgery uh, and over a period of time after oil removal, uh, the, the lesions have well regressed and the retina is well attached. This is another case, uh, quite an aggressive one. Again, you see peripheral fluorid angiomas with a lot of leak. Uh, again, a very turbid vitreous that you can see here. Uh, you can see there's a lot of exudation on the macula as well as superior part, which is all lifted up with traction and exudates. We put some perfluorocarbon, uh, which uh, helps preserve the posterior pole while we can take care of the lesions in the periphery. And if there is any inadvertent bleed, then we, we can uh, remove that. So here we also stain the vitreous to make sure that we remove uh, all the connections and then diathermize some of these areas, the feeder vessels, uh, and, and, and remove the angiomas one after the other. The superior one is very big. And you can see we've uh, first uh, diathermized the area, feeder vessels are blocked, and a lot of laser is done to that area. We also top it up with doing cryo to the periphery because these are large lesions which uh, will not regress with just laser uh, uh, only. So a lot of laser and cryo is done to regress them. This is another case. Uh, you can see that we are again putting perfluorocarbons in, in preparation of taking care of the peripheral areas. Uh, a lot of residual damage is there in the posterior pole. Uh, we remove, uh, look for membranes and remove them. And here you can see that the peripheral part, we are, there is a traction which is extending from this inferior part. So we do diathermy and, and prepare for uh, cutting the retina as well as the angioma there uh, and avoid bleeding. So bleeding is one of the most important complications that can happen during surgery. So do a lot of diathermy, also raise pressure at the time of actual cutting of the angioma temporarily, and then uh, after confirming that there is no bleed, there's a subretinal fibrosis also, uh, which is here, which is removed uh, in this situation. And after that, uh, a good laser is done uh, after settling uh, the central part of the retina. 
then and at the end put silicon oil. Again, another case with uh, very florid angiomas with a lot of traction. These patients have a lot of tendency for membranes and traction and, and we want to avoid this. Best is to detect them in time so that you can laser and kill them. Otherwise, they just keep on extending. So here, once again, we take care of the vitreous first. Uh, remove it uh, here because there are membranes we stain with brilliant blue also to help us uh, remove uh, some of these uh, areas. And you can see that we are trying to remove the, the epiretinal component of the membranes uh, from this area. And suddenly there is a bleed. Uh, now this is something which can happen in these cases and one has to raise pressure uh, instantly so that it stops uh, spoiling your field of view and uh, raise pressure, remove what is the residual bleed, put uh, diathermy uh, instantly so that the actual bleeding stops and then you can proceed uh, further on with the surgery. So, so at the end again, do a lot of good laser and, and cryo to these areas. You can see that we are uh, depressing with the cryo probe and, and doing a cryo so that the whole lesion fibrosis in total. So you have to use a combination of these uh, laser cryo, etc., to regress them at times. Lastly, I want to show you a case of a young girl who had come, who comes regularly for checkups and all these lesions are treated angiomas at uh, various points of time. And uh, every time she comes, uh, sometimes we don't find a new lesion, but at times we find a small lesion. Now, she came at one point with no new lesion, but then fluid in the, in the macula. And, uh, and, and on follow-up, the vision was good, so we didn't uh, do anything at that point of time. But we kept observing and looking for lesions in the periphery. And, and as she came for follow-up, a membrane started forming with a pseudo-hole-like formation, uh, which was happening on the macula. And, and then uh, a macular hole uh, formed eventually. The patient was reluctant for surgery earlier, but when the hole formed and she had a central visual issue, then she uh, agreed for surgery. And you can see how the traction increased by the time surgery was done. So this is surgery being done for uh, that particular case. Uh, we first removed the vitreous. Most of the angiomas you can see are regressed, but then they lead to a lot of fibrotic and membrane components. And this is the actual uh, macular lesion and you can also see vessels which are raised. Uh, we do diathermy to that so that uh, it doesn't bleed when we remove the membrane. Uh, so there are these are atypical membranes which, which uh, form. Uh, they can be vascular and again you can see there is a small bleed which, which comes through and has to be careful uh, with these cases. Always keep a watch on the bleeding component and then this whole and since there's a hole, we are careful that we don't just pull off this whole tissue. Otherwise, we may increase that and we, uh, we leave a tag attached to the central part and just cut off the rest with the cutter so that no traction is, is applied on that. And then stain with brilliant blue to remove uh, uh, the ILM from that area. And you can see that the ILM is coming off. Uh, and at the end of surgery, then uh, do an air fluid exchange and give gas. This patient did quite well and the macula uh, hole, the hole was closed and, and uh, initially there was some edema which settled down with time and she still keeps coming for follow-up uh, after that. So these are some of the cases which I wanted to show you surgically are challenging because they have formed a lot of traction and they have a lot of tendency to bleed and fibros and um, the essence is to take care of them before they reach this stage. But if at all they reach this stage, then all these things, maneuvers have to be done uh, to achieve the best possible results in the circumstances. Thank you very much.